I will call the uh, City of Baldwin Special Call the City Council Work Session of July 1st, 2020, Thursday, 6, partial 6 p.m. to order. Um, our first order of business will be our invocation of the Regent, Mr. Mack. Thank you, Mayor. I would invite anybody who would want to join me in prayer, please do so. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you gave us the opportunity to gather together and discuss the business of the city. We hope that as we work together as one team, we're uh, able to, in everything that we say and we do, glorify you, Lord, and uh, make this a, a city that's pleasing in your sight. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. I'd ask anybody who would want to to join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I welcome each and every one of you to the meeting this evening. As the records reflect that all members of council are present in chamber, with the exception of Ms. Kuzner, who has joined us via Zoom remotely. This is a work session, so we'll try to uh, do it as an informal as possible with this perfect recording, I guess, and everything. Also, with us tonight is our city manager, Mr. Matthew, and along with that. The guests we introduced at the proper time for that. Uh, first order of business is the Baldwin Development Court. <coughs> Pretty much goes out of economic development, I believe, Mr. Patrick, you're not there. Horseshoe Road. Absolutely, Mayor. Um, the, the primary reason that we're here tonight, we've, we've discussed uh, the potential formation of a development corporation as some of our uh, neighbors around us have, uh, have previously done. Um, there are a number of advantages that would uh, make economic development, I don't want to say easier, but there are some areas that a corporation could navigate more easily than a governmental body. So uh, I know that there have been a number of questions from members of council, and that's that's why we're here tonight is to try and get those uh, those questions answered to see how this has worked in other areas from a practical standpoint, the real world applications, what it looks like, the pitfalls, the drawbacks, as well as obviously the benefits. Um, sorry, Mr. Broad could not be here tonight, but I certainly understand and um, uh, hope to have him back very soon. So at this time, I'll go ahead and turn it over to the city administrator. Thank you, Mr. Matney, members of council. So I'm going to walk you through a, a presentation. Um, So to provide some historical context on how we, the city manages its economic and community development. So in 2015, council established the community development department. And then after that, of course, uh, created the department director position, which is currently held by Van Broad. Under the community development department, it includes the cultural arts center and the functions of economic development office. With the city's growth, uh, the amount of time that it's taken to, to do it all um, has some what, what is, can, be, can be considered blurred lines. So I'm going to walk through each function of the office, just what, what that office does. So community development generally is managing HUD funds and CDBG funds in most, in most entities. That's what community development consists of. For the city, that's managed by the Greenville County Redevelopment Authority. And so they manage all the city's HUD funds and CDBG funds, they do facade programs. Uh, so they manage that for the city through an agreement. So we really don't do that in-house. We just, we just, when we get inquiries from businesses or from residents about community development, we, we just pass them along to GCRA. The Cultural Arts Center, um, that provides programming there. They have a manager. That, that manages the day-to-day -day operations of the cultural center. They also do community engagement through the festivals and events and the art theater program that they have there. And they promote the arts within the city. 
making it really a culture hub. Economic development is, of course, retaining businesses, recruiting new businesses, uh, looking at different sites, providing tours for potential businesses to relocate here in the city of those sites, working with uh, neighboring cities and other regional development groups on promoting the city and, and this business uh, environment in the hopes of attracting businesses. So that's handled under the Community Development Department and that's managed by uh, Van Broad, in addition to serving as uh, the, the head for the Cultural Center and for any community development efforts that are, that are ongoing. So GCRA manages the community development for the city. And this is just a list of some of the programs that they have. They have the facade improvement program, which the city contributes funds to. They, they have the economic development revolving fund. They do owner occupied rehabilitations for folks that meet their thresholds um, income wise, infrastructure improvement. Uh, they rent affordable housing. It's a way of income for them. And they also do new construction of affordable housing. The most recent is Miller, Miller Place Court intersection of Old Mill Road and Miller Road. They're also facilitating the Mercy housing development that, that's starting, that's ongoing. And there's another affordable housing development and senior housing development on up East Butler Road. One's right behind the, the, the Sphinx that's there. There's another affordable unit housing, but, for, but those are small uh, developments compared to the amount of residential development that's ongoing in the city right now. Over the past five years, the Cultural Center has really grown in the programming that it offers. As you know, the Beach and Fridays music series, Peace of Blues and Jazz Festival, Barbecue Festival, the Art Haven School, uh, the Children's Theater, the Maraud of Art Classes from Senior Lessons to the gar uh, uh, Guitar Lessons, Piano Lessons, um, the, the woodworking that, that goes on there, the painting. So it's, it's really becoming a, a, a central place for the city as it relates to cultural arts. Over the, past, over the past five years, economic development efforts is just a summary of some of the projects that have, have, have occurred and some that are ongoing. Train, Aloe, Starbucks, J. Peters, Luna Rosa, Bridgeway Station, the city center projects, so there's been a tremendous success over the past five years, particularly over the past three years, where it's really ramped up uh, economic development wise. And so we wanna keep that going on in the future. And annexation has increased, the city's square mileage has increased by at least 1.5 miles over the past five years. Uh, 4,700 residential structures ongoing right now being constructed along with 37 multifamily apartment units. Most of that is Novo, but also that includes Mercy Housing and the planned development of further up East Butler Road. So in looking at the way the city manages economic development and community development with the amount of projects going on and those that we think will occur in the future, I wanted to uh, present to council a path of how we can manage, how I think it can be managed um, better and improved just efficiency wise. And so I, I, I would recommend continuing community development through GCRA. They're the experts at that. They're able to do it. They have the staff to do it. Um, they have a large staff. And, and although they're managing it for multiple cities, um, they do a good job. They have good leadership um, at, with the executive director being John Castile. And, and they know exactly how to, ma to manage those home funds and CDBG funds and provide those other services for increasing affordable housing throughout the county. Um, the culture center is, is different from community development and economic development. I would recommend allowing that to be a component of the recreation department. I think it was there originally before being separate or being combined with community development department or having to stand as a, a standalone office under the administration department. Uh, structure wouldn't change, the management wouldn't change, the governance of it would not change. Uh, it, would, it would no longer be a part of community development. And then finally, I would recommend the, the establishment of an economic development corporation. Um, so what are the benefits of having a development corporation? One of the primary benefits is flexibility. Uh, it, there are certain times when confidentiality is needed when you're either 
recruiting a business or you've located a potential site or you're working with a property owner on developing that site to attract businesses or even when it comes to retaining businesses, being able to do it in a confidential manner um, is extremely important and can really help in moving the project along quicker than, than otherwise it, it, it would go. The agility is very important with community, with that economic development, being able to give decisions to either businesses that you're recruiting or businesses that you're trying to re retain or uh, residential developers that you're working with, being able to have quick decisions without having to come before uh, council sometimes uh, can really help with the process. An, an example would have, would, have, would have been contoured and the, the process that that went through was a, it was a drawn out process, but it, it, it put things in front of council um, that needed their approval that if you had a development corporation could have been handled quicker, a little bit more confidential, and it wouldn't have been presented into, to council until it was ready. I mean, it's, it had been vetted by staff, vetted by all the attorneys, uh, and, and that way council wouldn't be in a position of having to provide direction on projects with there still being big questions that haven't been answered. Um, the ability to raise revenue as, as a governmental agency, city is limited in the revenue that is generated. It's, it has to all be approved by council. It's mainly property taxes, ad valerium taxes, and business license and special revenues. Things that are where council has the authority statutorily to, to have that revenue raised and used for a specific purpose. With the Economic Development Corporation, they can go out of different funding, funding sources. They can receive private donations. Um, whereas the city may get a private donation, but it has to, of course, be approved. And there's, there's some limitations to how it can be utilized. Uh, <clears throat> expertise from, a, from the outside. So the Economic Development Corporation is managed by a board. I know as council reviews the ordinance, that's the draft ordinance that's in your agenda packet, it outlines the you know, kind of how that board can be made up of and who's on that board, but you can have expertise on the board that's uh, specifically for development. You can have pretty much whoever you want, but I, you know, you could have uh, experts in the field, business owners, CEOs, folks that do economic development, folks that are in the business community every day uh, that serve on that board. And also the board can direct the, the, the director or the staff of the corporation to, to be as aggressive as council would like. Council can set goals and priorities of the type of development you all would want to see and can transmit that information to the board and, and they can direct their staff accordingly. Some other benefits, it, it removes local politics at times. Uh, from it because it can be a confidential process. It can it can allow the folks that, that that are experts just focus on the work, without sometimes having the outside noise that that comes with government. And it operates in similar fashion as a business. It's almost like an enterprise. Uh, it's, it's a specialized trade. Um, I, I'm thankful for uh, Mr. Johnson and Mr. Deaton for for their time, and they'll be able to share their experiences. But uh, the private sector operates differently than the public sector. And, and sometimes if you have that type of expertise leading that process, uh, the, the results may be improved from what we're seeing now. And we've had great results and, and the development is occurring here in the city uh, every day. Um, but this is just a different approach that may, that may yield even, even better results. Some of the drawbacks, the governance structure, one of the major questions uh, I know that you all have presented to me, it's, it, it, it almost feels like council is giving up a, a level of control. Um, and, and, but the, the way the ordinance is drafted, council can adjust it um, and have a governance structure that still allows for um, more of an arm's length type of a, a control over the, the corporation and the efforts. There are some potential conflicts with other local businesses, other local organizations. I mean, the Malden Chamber uh, does economic development and promotes the city and uh, works to retain businesses. So there could be some potential conflicts there with the corporation and, and groups such as the Chamber and other businesses here that are, that are located here. So the steps to, if council would, 
you know, wants to go in that direction, the steps that would be involved, of course, is you would have to approve an ordinance to establish the actual corporation, <laughs> along with the approval of the bylaws that would include the governance structure, the board appointees, the terms of the board members, uh, any of their responsibilities, responsibilities of executive director. You can put reporting parameters in place. Uh, so it's, it's really a kind of how you would like the corporation to be set up if it is something that you desire to do. Um, I'll tell you right now, I, I wanna open it up for uh, Mr. Deaton and Mr. Murrow to kind of share their experiences with economic development here locally and just kind of what, they, what they've seen with, the, with economic development corporations. So anyone that wants to come up, the podium right there. Good evening. Uh, my name is Reno Deaton. I serve as the director of the Career Development Corporation. Uh, we were created in 2002. We are a, a 501c4 organization. Um, we're made up of uh, and governed by a board of directors of nine folks. Historically, uh, back in 2002, before we were created, there were two economic development groups in Greer, a uh, city group and a chamber group. Uh, the population was about 10,000 people at the time. Uh, not a lot going on, as you can imagine. The primary function of both those organizations was competing for uh, what little resources and credit there was to go around. Uh, city leaders at the time made the decision that we needed to get our act together, uh, all pulled in the same direction. They created our organization. Uh, intentionally, they created a nine member board director structure for us. Uh, three members are appointed by uh, the city of Greer. Uh, one of those members is a permanent member, and that is the, the Greer city administrator. And then two of those members are appointed by council rotating three year terms. Uh, three of our board members are appointed by the Greer Commission of Public Works. Uh, one of those members is a permanent member, the CPW general manager, and two of those members are appointed by the Greer Commission of Public Works on three year rotating terms. We have one member that represents the partnership for tomorrow, which is our private fundraising arm. One member that represents the uh, Greer Chamber of Commerce. And those eight board of direct board members uh, appoint one member at large to get to the nine. Um, we've sat three. Uh, we function independently, uh, separate office space, separate budget. We run our operation as an independent business. Uh, we see what we're funded by a combination of uh, dollars from the city of Greer. We get an allocation from the city of Greer based upon seven and one percent of local business license fee receipts. So those are just the local dollars, not those collected by the independent association. We request an allocation annually from the Greer Commission of Public Works, and that can vary from year to year depending upon our work on the work and their satisfaction with our performance. Uh, we use private fundraising uh, locally from our uh, local merchant base, and then we have a private fundraising arm called the Partnership for Tomorrow, which gives us a uh, direction control over whatever it is we raise on an individual basis, typically about $100,000 is our threshold. Um, I'm accountable to the board of directors. The members of my team are accountable to me. Uh, they set a, a set of metrics for us uh, based upon whatever our program of work looks like for that particular year. We like to focus on four areas uh, annually uh, this retention. New business recruiting, product development, and marketing. So business retention, we think, is the most important thing that we can do, the process of being out and visiting with uh, <laughs> businesses that are already in our community, understanding what their challenges and opportunities are, and making sure that we're addressing those very quickly and aggressively. Uh, for business re recruiting, uh, because we have such great relationships with our county organizations, we're able to have a pretty broad focus in terms of new recruiting. So we have both an industrial look and a commercial look. Uh, we work with our board of directors to establish a set of target industries each year on both industrial and commercial uh, ventures. Um, and then we go out about the process of recruiting new businesses to fill those target industry slots. For marketing, uh, our function is, is multifaceted as well. We do some marketing to uh, decision makers, trying to make folks who might be in the room with prospects understand that we're a great location to relocate, start up, or expand their business. We do some direct consumer marketing specifically to support our downtown merch association. And then we operate a downtown merch association, which in and of itself is a marketing effort. Uh, and then lastly, uh, product development. So although we don't own any property, we're very active working with those who do to make sure that we are bringing online the kinds of properties with the kinds of characteristics uh, that we hope will be attractive to those prospects that we've identified in our target industry list. Uh, we're very fortunate in Greer to have a really good blend of both industrial and commercial activity. Uh, my time is split, is split pretty much evenly among the two in terms of recruiting and retention. 
Um, there are different years or different cycles during the year in which one or the other is more active. Um, but we're generally just out there making sure that we're generating leads, uh, working our, our pipeline, and getting prospects to the project stage for a win or a loss. Um, we have an extensive set of metrics with our board of directors to make sure that we're operating according to, to their pleasure. Um, that include things like the number of uh, initial contacts that we make, uh, the number of uh, projects and prospects in our pipeline, uh, those deals that we close, new capital investment, new job creation, wage levels, um, to the extent that those projects uh, contribute to quality of life, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we have a great board of directors. We meet uh, once every two months um, and spend some time talking about uh, our metrics, our performance indicators, um, projects and prospects under uh, executive session, um, and uh, any other business items that any other business would have to deal with that reports to board of directors for the ultimate decision. Uh, it's a great situation for us. Um, it's the only one that I know for Revenue and Rear. Um, and really, just you know, fantastic board. Um, they're an active working board. They represent a diverse blend of, of uh, government, private business, um, attorneys, bankers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they really do a fantastic job in guiding us and giving up their, their time and their talent to make sure that we're uh, moving your board in a positive way. We've recently uh, branched out to a couple of programs to our program of work to include um, developing our entrepreneurship ecosystem in Greer and talent development, talent recruitment, talent retention, which is uh, sort of a new interest for us to make sure that we're on the cutting edge of competition for the greatest investors we have to offer. Happy to answer any questions that I can't do about our program. Uh, about what we do, about how it might apply to other places. Thank you, Mayor. Um, what did you say the, the rough allocation was from the city? So uh, our allocation is seven and one eighth percent of local business license fee receipts. Uh, we entered that program, sort of systematic uh, formulaic approach probably somewhere around six or seven years ago. Um, prior to that, we were requesting and receiving an annual allocation from the city. Uh, and to their credit, uh, their belief was, as an economic development organization, we should both benefit from the good work that we do, but also share in pain should any economic downturns uh, become sort of the reality of, of, of our, our world. Um, and so they set that allocation that year based upon whatever percentage that was of local business license we received turned out to be seven ways percent. And they continue with that allocation ever since. We've been fortunate that uh, as our economy has grown, because we've had some success in attracting new uh, businesses and industries, our uh, revenue has also grown in the organization to increase additional things like entrepreneurship, like talent development. What did that what did that percentage translate into in dollars for the current fiscal year? What do we receive currently from the city and yeah. allocation from our total budget? We're just about 50%. We're a $450,000 year organization. That's, that's what I was trying to get to. Okay. Um, there are a lot of amazing things that are happening in, in downtown Greer right now. From a, from a shoe leather standpoint, how much of that has been the development corporation and how much of that has been the city and how much of it has been a partnership in bringing those things online? Yeah, you know, I'd like to say that, that everything that happens happens with collaboration. Um, you know, I think the city is, is the most important actor in almost everything that happens. Um, obviously, any of the projects that we're working on, especially those that require incentive consideration, cannot happen without the city's help and guidance. Um, and certainly, you know, we as an organization are out there investing the millions of dollars that it takes to renew the street scene. But what I like about um, and appreciate about the city's approach is um, there's never a top down sort of direction, there's always a sense of collaboration. Um, that if we are to make investment and improvements, uh, we want to make those in a way that is the greatest benefit to the most people. And so there's no one closer, quite frankly, to the business community and career than our organization. And so uh, they've been kind and we've been very willing uh, to be right at the table with them as those improvements have been considered helpful. How have you found your relationship with the Greer Chamber? I mean, uh, the, Mr. Madden brought up that that could be uh, that there could be some ruffled feathers, but I, I think that our chamber is a very different chamber that focuses primarily as a Main Street chamber and not as much of a business recruitment uh, entity. So I don't know that we would have those kind of that kind of conflict. Do y'all have uh, much conflict? 
We uh, don't. Uh, we have a great chamber, uh, talked to by great businesses. The staff is fantastic. And of course, they were at the table originally um, when the decision was made to create the development corporation, uh, giving up at that point in time uh, their sort of very direct role in the recruiting process. Uh, business retention is something that we stress is the responsibility for all of us. The chamber does a great job in that role as well. The chamber does a great job in terms of creating the atmosphere and culture in where you know we can't recruit businesses to our community if there's not a sense that uh, there's a place there they fit in that uh, they're welcome. Uh, the chamber and all the businesses that are associated with, with the chamber and career do a phenomenal job with those things beyond all the programming and things they do specifically for business. They're a great partner. Uh, their president sits on my board of directors, uh, is a, an active participant in all that we do. Um, as we visit with prospects, we go on visit retention visits. Uh, we often uh, invite each other uh, to, to make sure that we're all at the table and all the things in the How difficult was the transition from it? economic development being a partially a function of the city to moving so much of that over to an economic development corporation uh, and what was kind of the ramp up period to get used to the new way of doing things and have, have you seen any a lot of bumps in the road since it, it predates my time at the Redevelopment corporation the actual transfer of uh, the the stories that i hear are all positive um, and we certainly don't carry any baggage of, of past uh, arguments or disagreements. Uh, as I've said, I've, I've been very pleased uh, in about 15 years in the career um, that the, the sense of collaboration, the sense of working together from the city, from our commission, public works, from the chamber, from the private sector, um, from all of our partners is still very strong. We have a real sense that, uh, that we've got to work together uh, and we've got to figure out ways to make sure that we're, we're planning and spending you know, a wise way together to make sure that uh, first thing you put out, I know it's, it's certainly a, it speaks to the collaboration of the city and we're really coming here to talk to us about what is hopefully a new um, new process for the city to take on. So certainly appreciate you coming on to talk to us about what you think of it. As I think about things like this. Um, one of my concerns always the new and shiny is no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. echo. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, the new when the new and shiny wears off, how do we plug for it and how what processes should we be thinking about um, from the city's perspective to to start the program a year from now? How do we keep that um, as a strong program? And then you you you've been there. 15 years. Right? Yes, sir. So, as I think you, you've kind of seen the very beginning, it's been around for 20 years. That's so, right. you kind of came in after it's well established. And since we're starting this program, what do we need to be mindful of as we're starting this program or considering starting? Yeah, you know, I, I mentioned collaboration. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's very intentional. It's, it's very, very important to what we do. I think it's very important to any organization. Um, you know, any, any prospect or project that we're working with. Um, unless we're all um, working on that together, um, it, it's it, we're ultimately they're going to see the, the errors, they're going to see the, the blemishes, and they're not going to want to spend time with us. And certainly anything that requires uh, the consideration of, of incentives or assistance or um, you know particular issues on the development process, we've got to make sure that we're that our communication is, is fantastic. And, and again, I've been really pleased over 15 years that everyone who's been in any role. And that process has really prioritized collaboration, communication, and working together. Um, you know, I think um, one of the one of the real challenges always is um, just making sure that there's enough funding to do the things that we want to do. Um, we uh, we very recently gotten more active in the grant writing space with our partnership with Tomorrow Arm. I think that's an important complement to what we can do. Um, adding resources that are not necessarily taxpayer resources to the things that we want to do. Um, the private uh, fundraising portion uh, has not always been the most important that we do, but it, just over the years it gained more and more importance as we think about really cool ideas that we wanted to do for which there are limited resources. Um, I've also been impressed by the appetite of the private sector to become involved, not in a reactionary or uh, an urgent way, but in a way of, of uh, again, collaboration and wanting to see good things happen in the community. And so uh, we've been very fortunate that uh, private groups have been willing to step up and provide funding for things that we want to accomplish and, and we're able to track accordingly. Uh, so, you know, I, I think in collaboration is key. 
um, making sure it's a healthy organization, um, making sure that it's empowered to do the things that we need to do, continuing the communication uh, that, that is so important. The city and CPW, for example, asked us to provide an annual report um, to council. We were invited on council retreats. Um, we spent a lot of time with staff, uh, various staff meetings that will occur. Um, leadership team, for example, were invited in. Uh, we get to know the staff well, they get to know us well. We're able to have conversations about projects and opportunities um, and communicate in a way that facilitates uh, successful project completion. Uh, so I think those things are probably what I would emphasize the most important. Thank you. So if um, you were as a 914, so as we look at the National Institute of Defense as well, what is that? What is that right there from all? That seems like a large board. So is that, has that been your experience? Um, uh, it's what I've had the entire 15 years that I've, that I've been in Greer. Our partnership with Tomorrow Organization uh, has traditionally had a larger board uh, that can be a bit uh, difficult to navigate. Um, from a staff person's perspective, the fewer bosses, uh, certainly the, the better I feel that I can accomplish things. But I'd say things kind of naturally work themselves out. Um, you know, for example, our city administrator sits on our, our board, our group commission public works uh, general manager sits on our board. If either of those two individuals um, had opinions that we weren't doing things correctly, that would carry the day. They're a couple of the most important voices, quite frankly, because we need them so much as partners to do the things that we want to do in economic development. And so although we have a nine-person board, the, the, the most important voices that most sort of urgent stakeholders tend to rise to the top in terms of the way that things get done, and it's a very effective way for us to work. So, we've heard a lot of well, I don't know, it's about um, within your experience, what are some of the weaknesses that you've seen over the years, or drawbacks over the years that we can do in there as we as we move towards that? How do we address it before they come? I guess I'll address it from the standpoint that I think the things that have happened have overcome weaknesses in our program. So uh, as a three-person organization, as any three-person business would be, you would find typically a lot of challenges sort of with quality of employment for your staff. Uh, we've been very fortunate that the city has provided us the opportunity to participate in their uh, health care program and the state retirement program, which has given us the ability to recruit and retain quality employees for a long period. Uh, and so we helped we work to avoid some of the challenges that the small business operations encounter because of the great relationships with our partners. Very good. Thank you. Yes, sir. That's all I have, sir. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Willis. <laughs> hey, what else? Oh, thank you, Mr. Deaton. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Mayor, Council Member, Mr. Matt, my name is Ronald Johnson. So um, I'm going to be much briefer um, just because <laughs> I, I, I do not have a, a developed corporation, uh, but I've spent some time talking to Mr. Madden and he reached out to me. Um, I come with 15 plus years of experience to like Mr. Deaton, but 14 of my years were down in Charleston, both on the nonprofit side and then uh, the county side. Now I'm in the city of Greenville. Been there almost one year. And so a couple of things that I'd like to leave with you guys with is um, to just reiterate what Mr. Deacon is saying. I think um, what's made the city of Greenville so successful, um, both when John Castile was there along with Nancy Whitworth, um, is that true collaboration. So what the mayor, Knox White, and the current council members and those in the past have done, along with our new city manager, John McDonald, so you know, he's been there about 18 months, maybe two years now is that public-private partnership. Um, I'll, I'll leave you with this as well, guys, is that um, when you can take a public enterprise and intertwine it with public leadership, like you all that are sitting up here, I think magical things truly do happen. Um, you guys have the, the ear of the community. You, you, you hear from them, you know what's going to at stake if, if things go wrong. But the private, what the private community gets to bring to the table is what's going to make their enterprise much more successful, which will in turn bring more dollars to the city, which will then in turn allow you guys to do more for the community and the citizens within it. And um, so I would say that 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 is, I think, crucial is um, uh, having the, giving the voice to the board of what the strategic direction needs to be for the city involvement in economic development. 
putting those people on the board that make the most sense that will help guide that strategy and then turning them loose and letting them run with it. Because again, I think you will find magical things happen. And as I told Mr. Madden, so coming from Charleston County, again, it's a uh, public uh, department in Charleston County. Um, they we explored at the time um, going to a to a 501c. Um, if you go and look around the state, you will find all the regional groups or all 501c's. You'll find lots of counties, probably many more than you would realize that are also 501c's, and a lot of municipalities are going that direction now um, as well. But again, I think um, to, to to the city of Greenville with, with the city manager and myself. Public private partnerships that the mayor and the, and the city council that currently appear to sit on, 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 on city council right now, there is no need for us because I mean, it is literally intertwined with both the community and the economic development department in the city of Greenville is that public private partnership. That's what drives the city of Greenville. Um, and I think if you guys, yeah, I know many of you have lived here for probably 40 plus years already, you've seen what is what's happening in the city of Greenville. And so that's my I'll open it for any questions if you guys have any let me understand you work with economic development department within the city of Greenville? Correct. Yes. You do not have a development corporation. No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So your boss is the county man city manager. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. How many people are within the department? Uh, I have six, including myself. Uh, and that's on the economic development side. I do have a community development side, and that's three. We are in a, a entitlement entity. Um, so we partner with GCRA and the Greenville Housing Fund, um, but because we're an entitlement community, we, we, we get the CGV on the home dollars and they administer. But I have an administrator that does that on the community development side. Well, thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Mr. Mayor, what, what's your department's annual budget look like? So, um, I should probably pay more attention to that, but I can tell you. <laughs> uh, is that um, because the city council and the city manager have made it a priority, I have not gone without. Um, and so um, we have, uh, they have access to an economic development fund. Um, and through that economic development fund, we have funded lots of projects, both uh, public private partnerships that we've done, um, as well as um, they've allocated. Um, so in the, in the Fiscal year 2020, they allocated out of that fund three quarters of a million dollars. 250,000 went to innovation and entrepreneurship to help us beef up next, which is um, the Chamber's you know, innovation and entrepreneurship um, 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 division department that's now under their foundation. They need that put it under the foundation at the Chamber. $250,000 has been has, was allocated in 2020 to economic development marketing. We will be unveiling. The city's economic development marketing campaign and brand in the summer, and two hundred fifty thousand dollars went to. Uh, we have a GLDC Greenville Local Development Corporation, and um, they they the city council um, put two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and GLDC matched that for an incentive program that we we're we're, we're going to be putting together to offer some people. And so it was FY twenty twenty and FY twenty twenty one. Going through the section reading, um, they allocated another three quarters of a million dollars split the same way that I just just just, just said. And so to that point, uh, Councilmember, I mean, I apologize. I don't know exactly what the budget is, but I'm more than happy to get this from that so you can have it. Um, but I do know again that we've not found that'd be great. I'd just be interested to see. Yes, uh, and, and from a recruitment standpoint, how how have you seen challenges? In recruiting outside of the central business district, obviously there's a lot of, there's a lot of activity going on in downtown Greenville right now, and just on the outskirts with Unity Park, and you know you've got uh, everything in the, in the Falls Park area, uh, and the Main and Broad. Um, how how much activity are you seeing outside of that central business district? Because obviously with with Malden's growth, we're seeing growth within our own central business district, but we, we're going to have to make it a priority to move outside of that as well. So, so for the city, um, from a tourism standpoint, retail and restaurants that continues to thrive outside of the CBD within the CBD as well. 
Um, we don't have much manufacturing or industrial space. Um, bread and butter for the state of South Carolina and the upstate, as well as GDC, is manufacturing. Um, and so we, we don't play very much in that. Within the CBD, we do see a lot of office. Um, that's where the predominance of our office is, anyways. Um, if, if, for instance, um, Southern First just announced in the last year their headquarters is going into just outside of the CBD on Inverde, and then uh, United Community Bank just announced they're going into the CBD because, again, from a corporate headquarters standpoint, with having talent they're going to need to recruit or retain is going to want to be in that CBD. Uh, what I will say uh, to you guys is um, partnerships that uh, Mr. Deaton mentioned, uh, so both with the South Carolina Department of Commerce, Upstate Alliance, and GADC, it's imperative that uh, this entity that you guys do set it up um, takes their own you know, life in their own hands. And what I mean by that is, is for instance, we just, I just came back at the Wilson Madden this morning on Red Eye from the West Coast. Um, we were out there actively recruiting uh, office users, trying to get them to rebuild because as we're finding out on the West Coast, because they're opening so late, a lot of companies are seeing productivity actually go the opposite direction of being at home. And they're now telling their employees that they have to come back. Some of their employees are like, don't want to be surrounded by two million people, and so there's an opportunity there. But I would just say that, to your point, uh, Councilor Matney, you need to 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 make sure you're doing that intentionally. Uh, because to your point, the CBD is going to <clears throat> once it gets its growth, it's going to feed upon itself. You've got to intentionally make sure you're doing what's outside of the CBD. As our GDL 2040 said, right? So they're looking at the nodes now, Lawrence Road, Wade Hampton, uh, Academy Street, and other nodes outside of the CBD in an effort to grow that. And, and one last question, if I may. Let's say uh, Mayor White and Mr. McDonough call you into Mayor White's office <clears throat> tomorrow and say, you know, we're thinking about spinning off into an economic development corporation. And you, you've noted that regionally, uh, and at the county level, you're seeing a lot of C4s take place. What would your response to be to them if they said, this is an idea we wanted to spitball? What you think? I would say, how, if, if, if we want to go down this road, we need to make sure we, we take what every other C4 out there has learned, incorporate the good. And if there are some issues that they have, remove those issues. And then form it that way. I would say very similarly to what Mr. Matt has done. Um, I like um, what Greer has. I like what you guys are looking at. I like what GAC has. We were looking for model R's in Charleston County after those. So I would say, Councilman Matt, you guys I would give them a thumbs up and say, yes, I'd be more than happy to help figure that out. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, question as far as in economic development here at your uh, amount of time you spend or efforts that uh, you spend together with your chamber, are you with uh, your president of your chamber? Is he actually involved with you in economic development recruitment and introductions and any departments within the chamber that you work with? So, um, within his department, I spend a lot more time with Mr. Hank Hyatt. Uh, who is their economic development manager. Um, and so, um, for instance, I had him involved in a meeting two weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago, um, with a prospect that came in um, because it fit into the Chamber of Field House, into the type of business that we're looking to come into the, to the city of Greenville. And so um, we collaborate um, as much as possible. Um, and especially more so now on the innovation and entrepreneurship side because of the next. Mr. Mayor, if I could just point out something very quickly too, because I think this is very important. Um, you know, when we talk about Malden's importance in the universe, the new, the new uh, Greer City Administrator is a Malden guy. Um, and Mr. Hank Hyatt with the Greenville Chamber lives in Malden. And uh, Mr. Carlos Phillips, who's president of the Greenville Chamber, his backyard borders Malden. So I, I think it's important to know how much Malden is touching of all of these folks.
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, and so, you know, I just want to close on the presentation. Just, uh, I do want to make it, make sure it's clear that, you know, my recommendation um, is really, a, is, is requesting council's consideration. I think that over the past five years, as I noted in the, in the presentation, that the Economic Development Office, Community Development Department has, has done well. Council is seeing the results of that. The residents are seeing the results of that. This is just only for consideration of an approach as we continue to grow that you all may want to consider doing. Uh, if, if you're not doing that, Brandon Madden will still continue to push as hard as possible every day. So I just want to make sure that's clear. Um, and this is just a process that, that will take time. Um, it, it won't happen overnight. But these are just the steps to get there if council wants to go in that, that, that direction. So that concludes the presentation. Thank you. In a workshop, there's been kind of an open discussion with the council board on opinions, reactions, gut feelings, eye in the sky, whatever it is you want to call it. It's dramatic. Thank you, Mary. Uh, I mean, when, when I first ran, uh, economic development was one of my primary uh, campaign issues. Uh, and, and largely that had to do with the fact that uh, you have GADC responsible for marketing the county as a whole. You have Upstate Alliance marketing its multi-county region. And we really did not have anybody that was marketing the city of Malden and developing the city of Malden um, from an economic growth standpoint. Uh, and I, I, I use this a lot. Um, former South Carolina Secretary of State Jim Miles used to say, he who does not toot his own horn will not have his horn tooted. Without somebody internally tooting our horn, it makes it very difficult for people outside the city of Malden to understand why this is such a special place, why uh, our geographic position uh, would be ideal for expansion uh, or relocation or establishing a new business. Um, all of the things that we have to offer in this area, um, there, there's just a lot to it. And so when, when we finally formed the community development department and had Mr. Broad lead it, um, it, it seemed like uh, a great idea at the time, and I, I think that it has been. You know, one of the things noted in Mr. Madden's presentation, and I can't emphasize this enough, but over the past several years, we have seen over $150 million in investment in the city of Malden from uh, our economic development efforts. I can only imagine what would happen if we had uh, a a quasi-private arm that could act more nimbly than we can as a council. Um, there are a lot of things going on right now. We've got a lot of plates spinning and we can't really talk about a lot of those plates. Um, but you know, imagine what it, what it could look like with somebody out there that is just going 150 miles an hour all the time. Now, of course, today is July 1st, which means that we're in the new fiscal year. So we don't have to move on this immediately. We have time to organize this and to get it right, but the budgeting is going to have to be there because it's going to cost money. Staffing is going to cost money. Marketing is going to cost money. We need to figure out what that's going to look like, and I think that that kind of appropriation we couldn't really do right now, um, but we certainly will be able to do that in the future. So uh, I think that we've got the opportunity to really get things the way that we want uh, and make this, um, make it something special. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I think one of the key words I kept hearing there is time. And I think that's what the real question is here. If we continue to move on with these, will we just find that at this time in the city, what are we going to do? And I think you're right, you're at the point where um, we could plug, plug along with how we've had it set up. We could, you know, build a partner with a partner a little more and try to get more money in that way back 
think the city is going to look more past that time of the city. Um, I think we're to the where you have to look. Uh, they seem kind of organic, naturally, over time, and look all the other uh, cities that have these as if exactly that or something that organically happened. Kind of they stuck out and said, okay, we can do all of those things within our department, and then we'll be efficiently what we you have flexibility, what is our option? And this is this is fixing this option. So when I look at it, I think the city has a lot of time for a corporation like this to just maybe get it right and then move forward. Because my concern is always creating a board, uh, creating this, and then it looks new, shiny, and great for two years, and then we don't invest in it, we don't nurture it, or we don't put the right people in place, and two years from now it's just in the back of it's kind of like a good consultant, like good consultants are that would be my concern with this this board is what uh, people know and understand what do they do and how do they help the city. That's all I have to say. But I certainly, I'm sorry, I certainly, I see the benefit of it and probably have the other one. I'd love to be looking at it and watch people do that too. My standpoint, I have been one of the guys who referred to in the city over 40 years as the most boring rate for the kind of thing. Um, and what we've done over the last five years has been phenomenal. Um, and I remember the initial discussion tonight. We threw the Van Road term out there and talked about that from a um, even an outsider. Um, what he's done in five years is build relationships. We heard that from most people. Relationships, um, building relationships with industry, commercial um, developers internally for homes, apartments, uh, downtown center, whatever. Uh, you know, this our city center was we're over ten years into the vision. The bit was published in portfolio. We're just now getting that started type thing. So it has been a progression type thing. Um, I don't know we got the luxury for 10 years before we do anything else. Um, this city is changing. You look at the demographics and you go through the neighborhoods and you look at them. Things are changing. Um, but we still have a large segment of our population that's been here in traditional single resident homes, four corner neighborhoods, I like to say, uh, for a long, long time that they like it like it is. I personally like the way our city has developed and the fact we have our industry encircled us. And we don't have heavy industry in the middle of town or 20 miles out. It's within a mile and a half from uh, business parks, commercial warehousing, and industrial space type thing. Then as you start coming back to our core, where we're kind of sitting in it, um, You've got small businesses along the East Butler Road Corridor, the West Butler Road Corridor, and uh, transitioning on uh, North and South Main Street. So uh, that's been incremental. You know, when we created economic development, we knew that we had to do something to draw people to Malden. Uh, I think it's another term you used to use, maybe as Mr. Broad uses, you've got to put. Uh, people in the seats. Uh, and we didn't really have a reason to put people in the seats. So we spent time and I believe uh, the development of the cultural fairs and cultural center, um, our Beach and Friday series and all those things have made Malden a destination, especially on Friday night. Um, what we got to do at 9 30 is give them a place to walk to. And we're doing that and moving forward with that. So it's been incremental. And uh, this corporation could be a different step forward for us also. It also could be done with any kind of development as uh, Mr. Johnson laid out that the city of Greenville is doing. And those of us who have watched the city of Greenville, they, they've got a little bit of growth in the last 15, 20 years without a, a development corporation. Um, there's pros and cons of both that. We've experienced some of those. It would have been nice to have more of a environment where ideas can be floated and uh, things 
brought closer to a decision making process, a fact presentation to council before we went into it and made it public type thing. I see the benefits of both, but also we'll see us incrementally getting there. Um, I definitely think even though the development we're at today and what we're going to be in the next few years is severely underfunded and uh, understaffed. And we need that. Uh, that was one of the positive things I heard about the corporation is it's separate from government. And then I hear to make things easier, they extended uh, city benefits and state retirement to them. That just put the overhead right back on that department. And uh, I don't know how I feel about that. So I see the pros and cons of both of it. I, I do see us uh, walking toward that. Uh, I'm not ready to do, uh, do a, a barrel jump or a 10 foot leap. Thank you, incremental step. I think some discussion I'm going. Definitely look forward to that. I look forward to the uh, open discussion we have. And, uh, I'm glad to know that Mr. Madden is going to continue working hard. When he first said that, it scared me a little bit. And so I'm so glad to see him going to keep working hard. And, uh, and watching him work hard, I feel sure the department has on it and I'm going to work hard. So I feel good about what we're doing and where we're heading. Kind of thing. So, with that being good news, we'll pass the plate to Mr. Rose. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, I think all I can say is as we consider this, we could have a little bit of a different situation and even where you're bringing up now with the culprits and the main zoning development being so wrapped up, the problems can be so wrapped up. I think how we handle that. The corporate center specifically is really important as well. Um, so as to not set that department in the, the programming back by moving it. Um, so but I think as we as we muddle through this, I think it's really key to key to moving forward and sustaining the success, success of that department. Um, you know, it's kind of like Mr. Madden said, it's either create its own thing or move it over to the rec department. I think it's, that we have to get rid of serious thought to that as well. I don't know how, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about that part. <laughs> I just know that I like the idea of development board. Thank you. Okay. And I, I am proud of what our recreation department is doing. I'm proud of what our cultural affairs department is doing. Uh, that would be a strange marriage again. We split it out years ago for a reason. And, uh, I would hate to uh, dilute their focus and be more. Maybe get that from my opinion. I was just letting them know we're going to have to have one. Anything else? Public comment. We really don't have any public out there. We can call Daniel and John Tobin, but we will uh, Here another any council request. To be mayor, uh, at this time, I would move that we enter executive session and receive legal advice regarding club ethical mm -hmm. out under section 30 dash 4 dash 78. Thank you, Mr. Matty. I totally overlooked that. I have a motion to enter into executive session. Let's take a vote, Mr. Matty. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? You know, all those in favor of motion to enter the executive session say aye. Aye. Thank you. Seven zero. We will be adjourned to the executive session. Question is seven p.m. Yeah, I thought I was hearing a voice. Yes. Uh, uh, council is returning from executive session approximately nine p.m. Uh, Matt, would you like to report out? Thank you, Mayor. Coming out of executive session 8.58 p.m. No decisions were made. No votes were taken. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Next item on the agenda is public comment. Don't see any. Is there anyone online? No. Online. Uh, council request. Here, doesn't want to hear on adjournment. So moved. Motion for adjournment. No second. Second. All those in favor 
say aye. 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 All right, we are adjourned to sign peace here. I heard strong sermon once say that.